morning's devotions come from the New Highlands District, St. Croix Circuit. Good morning. Welcome to the Leeward Island District devotional for today. I'm Gilbert Laban, a local presbyter in the St. Croix Circuit. Let us pray. Oh God, we praise you. We honor you and give you the glory due only unto you. We humbly confess our many sins with the assurance that like a loving father, you are always ready to forgive. Lord, we thank you for spared lives and for all the blessings of this life. But even more so, we are grateful for the new day, a chance to order our lives according to your will. You are a loving and forgiving God, God of mercy and of many chances. Be with us in this time of devotion that we pray, this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. As the deep panted for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire. As a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? 
My tears have been food day and night, while people say to me continually, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throne and led them in procession to the house of God. With glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul, and why are you so disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore, I remember from the land of Jordan and of Hermon from Mount Mizar. Deep calls unto, into deep at the thunder of your cataracts. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night his song is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. I say to God, my rock, why have you forsake, forgotten me? Why must I walk about mournfully because the enemy oppressed me? As with a deadly wound in my body, my adversaries taunt me, while they say to me continually, where is your God? Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you so disquieted within me? Hope in God, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. Psalm 22, it is a psalm of laments, as the writer longs for God to act, as he calls for help in his distress. In verses 1 to 3, he feels like a there that pants for water, so his soul longs for God's presence. He cries out, my tears have been my food day and night, and asks the Lord, when shall I see your face? He complains that people continually ask him, where is your God? And again, in verse 9 to 10, he complains that God has forgotten him. Look, my enemies oppress me. They taunt me, saying, where is your God? Today, many of us worry that our adversary, the evil one, has brought much suffering upon us. We experience the everyday and we recite the long list of social ills that haunt us day after day. Crime, violence, corruption, and broken families. So hurt us. When we hear others question us, where, where is my God? We wonder as unbelievers look at us and ask us, where is your God who will deliver you? Like us, Job asks God, why do the righteous people suffer? According to the book of Job, the person, the righteous suffer, to test their faith in God, to make them more like him, to bring him glory. Some people say to us, we suffer because we have sinned and anchor God. The Bible is clear that God allows the righteous people to suffer. Even Jesus suffered, although he was true and faithful to the very end. And so, yes, we suffer because of our personal wrongdoings. And believers also suffer hardship through no fault of their own. So we often wonder, where is God when it hurts? We want to know the answer to this question most often when we feel the pains and trials and doubts of life. Jesus, during his crucifixion, asks, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? To the onlookers then, it appears that God did forsake Jesus. And so we can conclude that he might also forsake us in our darkest moments. Yet on studying events that took place after the crucifixion of Jesus, the truth is exposed that nothing can separate us from the love of Christ, not even death. It's recorded in Romans 8, 37 to 39. From this example alone, we can be assured that even when we do feel God's presence, in times of suffering and pain, he seems far away can still believe his promises that he will never leave us nor forsake us. We are reminded that God sometimes permits things to happen to accomplish his purposes for us. Several Bible, Bible passages assure us in the fact that God does not lie. He never changes. His word stands forever true. So friends, do not lose hearts. 
over your painful circumstances today because we live by faith in God's word, not putting hope for the seen and unseen. We can trust God that our present troubles far outweigh all the suffering that we will endure on this earth. Let us then focus not on what is seen or what is unseen, because we know and believe that what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. We also trust God's word, which says he is constantly working things together for the good for all those who love him, have called him according to his purposes. Even though we do not always see the way in which God working things out, we are assured that the time will come where we will understand more fully, more clearly. Today we have limited understanding of things of God, but that day is certainly coming when we too will understand. Ask the question then, where is God? And where is God when it hurts so terribly? Message to us in hard times, it is when we cannot see his hand, we can trust his promises and know for certain that he has never and will never forsake us. So when people see us and wonder and ask, where is your God in all the mess you're in? When we seem to be so weak, that is when we can most fully trust Christ's presence with us. All parties like Paul says, we know that in his strength is made perfect in our weakness. We know that despite the psalmist's worries and, and complaints in verse 5 and verse 11, he answers his original question and assures us and says, Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Then he ends with these words of assurance. I hope in God, for I shall praise him my help, and my God. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, when calamity and trouble surround us daily, in our lack of knowledge of you or plans for us, we often wonder and ask, and sometimes in pain and anguish, we even complain to you. Where are you, O God? Where are you, O Father? especially when it hurts so much. Lord God, give us the assurance today that you are with us, even in our suffering, in our time of need, that nothing will ever separate us from the love in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, the blessed God, Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit be with you today and even forevermore. Amen.